What's going on everybody, KKM here, and this gameplay is actually something I just hopped on to Black Ops 2, played a game of League Play. This result and it ends up being very close, and a really good game. It was so close that it ended up being called a draw, so I hope you guys enjoy this gameplay. And what I'm going to be talking about today is how Call of Duty, how Activision can pick themselves out of the slump that they're in, sales-wise, viewer-wise, support-wise, just pretty much the slump that they're in all together, whether it's competitive Call of Duty or just Call of Duty in general. There's still a lot of things that they need just because they're so far behind. They've gotten so far behind after being the top, the top uh, company, the top company in the gaming world. So uh, since then, games like CS:GO, Dota 2, all those games have really started to flourish. And uh, a huge reason is dev support. That's probably a huge, huge reason that Activision's lacking because games like CS:GO it's a game that it's made for competitive like it's not made for just a casual csgo player it's made for competitive and with call of duty it's made for the casual gamer so they always have to worry about the co-op modes the public matches stuff like that before they ever even get to the pros and the, i don't know it's kind of stupid like you'd think they might just risk it to bring another team on board to worry about certain like certain aspects of the game, whether it be competitive or something, or just publics in general, the co-op, uh, the co-op modes. But uh, anyways, they don't have full support because the devs of the game are worried about the public community first because it's so much bigger than the competitive community. Versus games like CS:GO, it's the competitive community before the public community. So uh, that's one thing they need is dev support and. Uh, Another thing they need to do is go back to Twitch. Just because MLG.TV is not very good as a streaming platform and any person who streams on it, or at least most of them will tell you that it isn't very good. Just look at the amount of viewers they get. Like Nate shot 30,000 on Twitch, 4,000 on MLG. So that right there is enough to kind of prove to you MLG is not the greatest. And then uh, on top of that, just the reason Twitch was so much better was because it was able you were able to find channels so you could attract more viewers and thus uh, higher growth and because you'd have viewers that were just you know looking for something to watch go over to Call of Duty because it's their favorite game or just they want to see some Call of Duty they're in the mood for some Call of Duty they've been playing a lot of CS lately and then they end up seeing a person like Nate Shot stream and they're like wow 30,000 viewers I want to watch this and so he watches it, and they end up enjoying it, and then it just keeps exponentially rising and rising and rising, and friends tell their friends about it, and then the community just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And that's really what, that's a huge thing. So they need to make sure they go back to Twitch, because that is very helpful. And it'll help a lot of new people come watch it, and that's how you get more viewers, more money, etc. And another thing, just in the competitive uh, community that people need to do is the pros need to make steady rosters that make sense because literally in today's game you've got a bunch of teams they just take four players and make them play together like just four players that are individually talented and put them together and that's not going to work I think the be the greatest example of a team that actually made sense was back in like back at COD Champs you had Denial you had the AR and Clayster the OBJ and replays and then you had the support in jcab then you had the smg slayer and attach so there you have every role filled up or even an, an example that i like to use a lot ssk gaming the god squad just back in call of duty ghost uh our roster made sense because we had the support in maniac the hybrid support in maniac and then we had the smg obj with huntsman smg slayer by me and then you also had the ar slayer by nitro so that's an example of a roster that does work but an example of a roster that doesn't work is take a team like the old Elevate before Apathy got dropped. You had Apathy, Saints, Nikki D, which is classic, and uh, Slacked. That's like four Slayers. You don't have an OBJ on that team because Nikki D, he's known for gun skill. Apathy, one of the best Slayers behind Scumpy and all those people. One of the best SMG Slayers, I should say. But just... And then you've got Saints, another Slayer, and they didn't even have a Bal. So the fact that the roster even worked out is crazy. 
it, I don't know, they definitely need to make some more rosters that make sense because then FaZe put together a roster that made sense, they beat Optic as well. And the next thing that they need is better, more knowledgeable casters. It's This isn't really too big. Uh, you have a couple of really good ones like Benson, um, Benson, Puckett. You need Fwiz back though. Um, Maven, Mr. X. They're all pretty good casters. Um, but I feel like if you got casters that were that people actually wanted to listen to and watch, like those big names in the Call of Duty casting community, then uh, I feel like you'd attract so much viewers just by people wanting to see them cast, like Fwiz, for example. Uh, and then my next thing that I'm going to that they need to worry about is making a game that's fun to watch and fun to play. You because Call of Duty Ghosts was fun to watch, not fun to play. And uh, that kind of just sucked because then all the people that followed pros on Twitter but never watched anything on MLG TV, they wouldn't watch Call of Duty because they think that the game sucks or just any reason that they watched, they saw on Twitter that their favorite pro was saying that the game, the game was terrible. They just didn't want to watch it then. So that lowered viewer base. That lowered the viewer base. And uh, the fan base, I guess, of competitive Call of Duty. And another thing they need is the game to be fun to watch. So that that way, like, AW can't even watch it. But I do have some fun playing it. And I literally can't stand to watch it. And if you can't stand to watch it, you're obviously not going to have people watching it. So, uh, yeah, you need to make it fun to play, fun to watch, just like Black Ops 2. And uh, you also need pubs that are playable. So when you have pubs that are playable, like Black Ops 2... That's going to help a lot because uh, people are going to want to play the game more and have some fun, rank up all the way. And that's always fun, just ranking up in a game that... Or it used to be really fun, just ranking up in a game of Call of Duty and just playing for fun, not even having to worry about, like... You, you just have fun. Like, <laughs> really nothing other than having fun. So pubs need to be playable. And you also need a ranked play, just like maybe in Black Ops 2 add the league playback, just take it and kind of not really add a twist to it, but add on to it. So make it even better than it was, or even like take the ranked play from CSGO, the competitive, and how you rank up through all the ranks and you end up becoming like global elite, stuff like that. I think that's pretty much what they need to do with their ranked play system in Black Ops 3, and that'll help a lot. And also, they need to go back to Twitch. And, uh, the next thing they need is they need to bring Nadeshot, like, they need to bring players like Nadeshot, Big T, Rambo, Twitch, etc. They need to bring all that back. Uh, just because Nadeshot, huge fan base, everyone loves him. Uh, they're gonna want to watch him, especially if he's streaming on Twitch and playing Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Then he's gonna attract more people to the community. And Big T hasn't played since Black Ops 2. Get a good game. Oh, sorry, I hit my mic. But get a good game. He'll play. And uh, you'll have a lot of people just wanting to watch him play again because everyone loves Big T. I don't think I've ever seen a person not like BT. B I just said BT. I don't think I've ever seen a person not like Big T just because he's a funny guy, stuff like that. Um, and then Rambo, everyone just likes him because he was an innovator of the game. He was smart. He uh, found out a lot of things about Call of Duty. So you need him back. And just pretty much stuff like that. Bring Fwiz back. He was a really good caster. Everyone likes him. The community likes him. Uh, and then also a big thing is if they could allow betting like in CSGO, how, how they have like CSGO Lounge, I think that'd be very beneficial to the community. Just because not only would you have people being able to be rewarded for uh, not really playing the game, but more so watching the game, just having people get rewarded for the game... I think everyone likes getting rewarded, so why wouldn't that be beneficial at all? And uh, I don't know what exactly they'd bet. They could bet things like, I don't know, I mean, maybe you could add skins to the game, but I don't think they will just because you can create your own camos. But uh, if you have, like, if you bet on pro teams, maybe you just bet straight money and you just make money depending on, you know, maybe someone makes odds and all together they just make odds for teams i don't know they can make it work somehow i'm not sure how exactly i'm sure they can make betting work and maybe fantasy leagues like they started in aw just ways that viewers can 
be rewarded for actually watching and even make it more fun to watch by having a favorite team that you bet on and if you bet on them then you're watching you're just hoping like your blood's racing your blood's pumping your heart is racing and you just you want to see your you want to see that team you bet on win you're just like oh please i don't want to lose this money or this gun or whatever so betting's just very beneficial and it attracts a lot of viewers and uh did i mention they need to go back to twitch and also another thing they can do they can make sure to do some fun things with the community and uh by doing fun things with the community i mean like uh not really more so like scavenger hunts but like interact with the community more like you have like it's a really good idea that they're taking the beta because it's not like any previous cod where i think world at war had it though i think they had the beta but it's not like the recent cods where they brought in like the most popular youtubers and they came in and tested it, even though they did do that a while ago but they're letting the casual gamer or just any player any player just any person that pre-orders the game, they get to try the game out, what is it, like three months early? Yeah, three months early in August, unless you have Xbox and it's two months early. And that's another bad thing too. Uh, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But if you have, if you do fun things with the community, like, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought. But like the beta, really good idea. Just interacting with the community, not just a few people at the top of the community. I think that can really help and I just really that's honestly just a great thing and then another thing that really slows Call of Duty's growth is the exclusiveness so you've got the people you've got like the people play Xbox people play PlayStation and the DLC goes to one console uh, like 30 days earlier and that's really not beneficial because that makes people less valued and thus less interested in the game so like how it's been for all these years how the uh the exclusive dlc came 30 days before or on xbox before the playstation so uh, you had the people on playstation they were just feeling like and eh, call of duty doesn't care about us let's just not play their game let's not buy it let's not play it so you're losing a lot right there and then you also had the people that played ps3 and they were just forgotten about like they would always say oh if you play Call of Duty PS3 then you must really suck and that's pretty much why you're losing half your viewer base or fan base just because you have exclusives so you could really make a lot of profit like even just make ladders extra ladders for people just without exclusives make ladders for the people on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 which obviously they do have the ladders and I'm trying to explain it in the way I'm thinking of but like if they take that game on the other console and they make it just almost as prioritized as the other one like when they switch back over to PS4 if they give people on Xbox the same benefits that they do PS4 obviously without the exclusive DLC stuff like that uh, is you know, that's pretty much what they need because uh, it's kind of hard to explain. I'm kind of like, I don't know, my mind's not working right now. But uh, it's just there is so many things that they need to do and uh, it's going to be really tough to do. So anyways, if they get rid of exclusives. That's going to help a lot. And uh, I think it's going to draw the whole community closer to each other as well. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is that they need to go back to Twitch. I don't think I mentioned that yet, but uh, they do need to go back to Twitch, and I think that'd be very beneficial. But anyways, guys, this is a gameplay against a full team in league play. We made them all back out. I ended up going 33 and 17. I think I had 33 for like the last minute or so, and then my teammates ended up catching up to me and slaying. I was leading them the whole entire game. Uh, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button below and subscribe. Comment any suggestions in the comment section down below. Use cinch code KCAM for 5% off any purchases. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys later. Hope you all have a great day and goodbye.